The long, inevitable day since the rumors had started in the summer has come. A black eye has been given to the sport of hockey itself. The NHL tried to keep it quiet and hush-hush the speculation for as long as they could, but the darkness of the 2010 Chicago Blackhawks has been brought to the light. It has been confirmed that they enabled a sexual predator who took advantage of his position of power to assault players against their will. And the Blackhawks did nothing about it for a decade. It was even worse since this was a team that went on to win a Stanley Cup. This championship's now tainted. The entire dynasty is tainted. Every time this run is mentioned from now on, it won't be for ending a long-standing streak of playoff failure and Dollar Bill's cheap reign of terror. It will be for how the entire fucking organization covered up repeated acts of sexual assault against several players. Everyone around the team knew, and high-ranking officials ignored it during their playoff run for reasons of maintaining locker room chemistry. I don't know, I'd say forcing players into sexual acts is doing a good job of fucking that up. Even worse is that Brad Aldrich, the piece of shit who did this, wasn't only allowed to leave the Blackhawks with dignity after the season. Chicago gave him letters of recommendation for future employers. Like all predators, he acted again and again. He allegedly pulled the same shit at Miami of Ohio and or Notre Dame. And it culminated in him using his position of power as a high school coach to sexually assault a 16-year-old boy. This damage could have been avoided, but the Blackhawks now have irreparable scandal on their hands. I'm not surprised at all that it took this long for these actions to be revealed. Being abused against your will, especially as a man, is seen as a sign of weakness. It's shameful and humiliating. People see it as if you deserve to be emasculated. You're inferior. You'll be shunned from the team due to said weakness as a man. This goes against the stereotype of being a professional athlete. You're supposed to be an alpha dog, a cock of the walk dynamo whose shit doesn't stink and everyone bows at your feet. No matter what league or age bracket, you are considered to be above people for your talents. Kyle Beach wasn't drafted with the 11th overall pick without cause. He had talent and upside, but look at his career trajectory before and after the events that occurred. I used to think that he just never developed. It happens to so many players, but with this new revelation? How much of his career stalling out was due to the trauma of those assaults? He's admitted to abusing drugs and alcohol to try and cope with the pain. Despite his situation, Beach was deemed as a locker room cancer and an adequate team player for years. Some of that was due to his days in junior, but a good bit happened when he was in the minors. He never played in the NHL and shuffled around hockey to where he's now in an obscure European league trying to etch out a living. This isn't about Beach or the Blackhawks. It's about the sport of hockey as a whole. There is a massive culture problem surrounding it. And the only way to move forward and heal from these atrocities is to admit there is a goddamn problem. I can already tell the NHL is only paying lip service to Beach. You know how I can see that? It's because Coach Q was able to be behind the bench the day after the allegations were not only revealed to be true, but he had insider knowledge of the whole damn situation. I don't care that he resigned with a shred of dignity the day after the game. Why wasn't he forced to take a leave of absence off the bat? Fuck the locker room chemistry. I don't know how you're able to go into a locker room and gain the respect of the players after this shit. They aren't drones for fuck's sake. They're human beings with actual feelings, emotions, and motivations for doing what they do. Far too often, hockey forces players to lose their humanity and sacrifice themselves and their bodies for the benefit of the team. Potentially years of quality life taken away because players play with severely crippling injuries. Ever see the injury reports that come out after a team's eliminated from the playoffs? Dudes are playing on broken legs, broken feet, severe injuries that would take them out for weeks at minimum. I understand why players go along with it. Jobs and roles in the NHL are scarce. If they choose not to play to heal up their obvious injury, someone else will probably take their place. Especially if you're, say, a fourth-line grinder with no leverage in your situation. You're on the first bus back to the minors, potentially to never see the NHL again. The coaches don't give a shit. To them, you're replaceable. There are plenty of wide-eyed recruits eager to go right into the meat grinder. They need to re-identify how they announce injuries. Have you ever noticed how they classify them in hockey? It's either as an upper body injury or a lower body injury. Unless it's to where they literally cannot walk or hold a stick. Then they will show mercy and actually identify the injury. What the hell is an upper body injury? Is it a scratch or is the player without a limb? If the coach tells you to go out and play, you're playing. They don't give a shit about anything else besides winning. The coaches know they're getting fired if they breathe improperly, so they'll do anything to keep their jobs. You may have broken bones, just pop some pills. Robin Lehner threw out some truth bombs on Twitter and I'm highly inclined to believe them. The frequent usage of painkillers and drug cocktails to mask pain, steroids and hard drugs like cocaine used to alleviate pain and stress, it probably happens a hell of a lot more in hockey than we'd like to think. Shit like this happens in the NFL all the damn time. In a physical sport like hockey, doesn't matter if Jack Eichel wants a different surgery. 
Doesn't matter if the surgery the Sabres want will still leave them in pain. It's not your body, it's the team's. If you object, it's like 1930s Hollywood. They'll force you out of town for being a cancer and make sure you never play in North America again. They'll call up all their buddies, reporters, and insiders and leak some info about you being a locker room nuisance. You'll never get another chance at the NHL again. It's all about gentlemen's agreements. Don't poach our RFAs so we can depress player salaries. Don't do anything to give the players any sense of free will. Scratch my back and I'll scratch yours. Look at a guy like Bob Murray of the Ducks. He's long had a reputation of being a piece of shit, and has probably threatened this same outcome with many players in his tenure. There's a reason why it's taken so long for him to not only be snuffed out, but seek help for a long-standing alcohol addiction. It's because hockey enabled it. This isn't about Kyle Beach or Bob Murray or anyone else. This is about the true issue of hockey. It's something I've been bitching about for years. The good old boys club. Incestuous buddy hires insulating an organization from the cold realities of the sport. Endless contempt that stagnates and rots from the inside out. If you're a high-ranking executive, there's a good chance you're either a former player or knew a former player. Why go outside the hive mind? Those strangers won't make for good drinking buddies. You can't smoke a cigar with them. You'd have to treat it like a business instead of a social club. What the Blackhawk scandal reveals to me? A damning testament to the failure of the boys club. A felony was committed in their house. Yet nothing was done so the boys club wouldn't have to be challenged. The boys club wouldn't dare compromise the sanctity of locker room chemistry and team cohesion. Sexual assault isn't about hockey. That's annoying noise unfit for a team. The same shit spreads to the talking heads on television for hockey. How long do we have to hear incompetent hacks and cavemen ramble on about this sort of thing? You're having fun on the ice? Nope, goes against the boys club, you're a bunch of jerks! Hockey has a culture problem, and it's permeated all aspects of the sport. In junior leagues and younger, it's even worse. There isn't even a toothless union to protect the players, they're just goddamn cannon fodder. If you're lucky or talented, you get to move on. If not, they'll just discard you and use you as firewood. How many former players either have some form of brain trauma or have been unable to adapt to life due to permanent injury? You don't have to look hard for examples. And it's not just goons or enforcers suffering. Look at Paul Correa's struggle since retiring. Go and hear testimony from guys like Nick Boynton, Daniel Carcillo, and Patrick O'Sullivan. Joe Murphy has been fucking homeless due to his failure to adapt after hockey. Countless drug addictions and suicides due to the grind of the game and its aftermath. And those are just the ones that are public or well known. Many former players suffer in silence. No paltry settlement or lawsuit can alleviate the symptoms and pain they go through. It's a cold reality that the boys club chooses to ignore. The only thing I'll give the Blackhawks credit for is being transparent with the findings and bringing it to the public eye. It's far too late for anything to be done, but at least we know some truth to the situation. We need to restate that the NHL is only doing things because they got caught with their pants down and failed to cut out the tumor before it spread throughout the body. And instead of address it head on, they're scurrying to get it out of the media cycle like a rat exposed to light. Only a $2 million fine for the Blackhawks? For covering up sexual assault for a decade? When the Devils were fined $3 million and lost draft picks for circumventing the cap? Fuck off. Just fuck off. Sorry, Badger Bob, but I can't agree with you today. This is a dark time for hockey. One of the bleakest in the sports history. The only way to fix it is to rip the wound open so it can properly heal, but I expect the NHL to do little of substance about it. Just the standard motions and current year PR moves. Token gestures, buzzwords, hollow pandering and virtue signaling, pretending to champion causes that I know they don't give a flying fuck about. I'm not about statements. I'm about actions. Words mean nothing when you just say them to get likes on social media. What the actions of the league and those involved show me is that they only care about their image. Not the victims of assault. Not Kyle Beach. Not the second Blackhawk or the 16-year-old victim of Aldrich. Themselves. And that's the most infuriating thing about this. I'm watching a slow-motion train wreck that they could easily avoid, but won't. I hope this gets fixed, but something tells me we'll be seeing more of this shit in the future. See you then.